Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Friends of Bangladeshi uh, program. Each time we bring a very special person uh, who is our friend, who is a friend of the community and a friend of the country. And today we have got a very special friend. But before we start talking to him, let's go and see a video clip. Mike Sharif fell in love with Bangla language and music when he was studying for his GCSE. Then he started learning how to write and speak in Bangla. Over the years, his love for Bangla grew so much that he decided to write a book in Bengali. His first visit to Bangladesh was in the late 80s when he was working with an NGO in the northern part of Bangladesh. That was just the beginning of his lifelong tie with Bangladesh. Now he chairs a charity called Friends of Kastubir. The organization has been working with people from the Kastubir area of Silet City in Bangladesh for many years. Friends of Kastubir aims to improve the opportunities for the poorest people living in this part of the country, mainly people working on the nearby tea estates and living in the slums on the outskirts of the city. As the charity goes on, Mike's tie with Bangla and Bangladesh grows stronger and stronger. We have just seen a video clip about our very special guest. Let me introduce him to you. He is none other than Mr. Mike Sharif. Thank Welcome you. to Channel S today. Thank you. Which part of the United Kingdom are you from? Well, I'm originally from Leicester. Mm -hmm. I was uh, born in Leicester, went to school in Leicester, then okay. went to university in Hull, then worked in Birmingham and then okay. London. Do you remember the Bangladesh uh, Liberation War? Well, I was a child, really, uh, in 1971. <laughs> Me too. Um, but yes, I do remember the Bangladesh uh, Liberation War. And I think it was the first international news story. I remember at home, we used to sit and listen to the radio mm -hmm. um, in the evening as a family. And um, uh, the Bangladesh um, Liberation War and Independence, I think, made quite an impression on me and was the first international news story that I think I remember. And in fact, when I went to work in Bangladesh in um, the 1980s, I was glancing through some old diaries and, and noticed that I'd actually made reference to the um, mm. British recognition of Bangladesh. Excellent. Um, That's that what time. I was going to ask yes. you yeah. about the UK recognising Bangladesh. Yeah. Do you remember that? Well, I made a note of that mm. in my diary. So obviously mm. it was something that made an impression on me uh, at the time, even though I was actually quite young. Okay. And uh, when you were a student, were you involved in any anti-racism uh, demonstration and, uh, you know, work to help the ethnic minority communities? Well, I was involved in anti-racist demonstrations in, in Leicester, Leicester because, of course, at that time in the 1970s was mm -hmm. the time when um, refugees from Uganda okay. particularly came to Leicester. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, do you remember um, the murder of Altawali in London? Yes, I mean, I remember it, but I was uh -huh. not in London and had very little connection uh -huh. with London at the time. My connection with London really happened after I worked in Bangladesh in uh, 1987. I actually uh -huh. had a motorcycle accident and came back to Britain, and then I found myself working in um, London. London. Yes. Is it East London? East London. I lived in Newham at that time, yes. Mm -hmm. um, the Bangladesh independence. You were a young man and you listened to radio, hard news, and you were interested in the independence of Bangladesh. Of course, there were hundreds, hundreds of thousands of people went into India and then hundreds of thousands of people were murdered. The liberation war went on. Um, so did you used to, uh, listen to all this in the radio? Well, I listened mm. to it on the radio, but of course I was a child at the time. time. And uh, I mean, really the first time I came across the Bangladeshi community in Britain was when I worked as a neighborhood worker uh -huh. in uh, Birmingham. And in the area where we worked, there were a, a few Bangladeshi families from Bangladesh. Do, do you, uh, and so obviously I got to know them and we, we, the, the project mm. I worked on was working with some families from Bangladesh. Do you remember the murder of Bongobundu? 
Sheikh Mujibur Rahman? I, I mean, I, obviously, I remember uh, it, but it, um, again, it was when I was quite, sure, quite young. Sure. Yes. So when did you first uh, visit Bangladesh? Well, I first went to Bangladesh um, when I got a job with a Swiss organisation, an international job. NGO. NGO. Um, and I worked in Kurigram, which is Kurigram. in the near near Rangpur, yeah, in Rangpur. the northwest of the country, the other side from um, Silet. And that was a big program working with uh, children. children. And I was particularly, I think the reason I applied was um, that they were kind of putting into practice the philosophy of um, an author that I'd read and had made quite an impression on me, somebody called Paolo Freire, who's mm -hmm. actually from um, Latin America, but this project was using um, his methodology, um, particularly in their work with uh, that their was when? literacy work. Which year was it? That was in 1987. But I then, of course, that was all cut short for me. So I had mm. this motorcycle accident and came back to, to, to Britain. UK. And I visited a couple of times after that with some friends. But then the next time I really went to Bangladesh for a longer period of time was when a friend of mine got married. So okay. I experienced Bangladesh. Um, in a different way then, uh -huh. um, really with um, a family who had come to Britain and settled in Britain, but went back, back to Bangladesh for this wedding. And it, after okay. that, I think I then started to go to Bangladesh okay. quite regularly because I was also involved with two projects, the okay. leaflets I've got here. Uh -huh. um, one is um, the Castabir Youth Action Kastabir, Group supporting yeah. them, Silet. which was yes, set up in yes. Silet. And the other is um, a project working with street children in, in, in Dhaka. In Dhaka. Yeah. Okay. Now, Dhaka. Dhaka is the capital. Yes. And um, you have seen Dhaka. What is your experience about Dhaka when you first went to Bangladesh and now? Comparison. Well, you know, Dhaka has changed um, remarkably. And um, I was looking at some of my letters um, that I wrote when I was in Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. And I wrote in one of my letters that um, people go to, uh, it's, it's great to go to Dhaka for some peace and quiet. Well, this was back in 1987. 87. Of course, you would never now dream of going to Dhaka for some peace and quiet yeah. because it's very busy, it's very noisy, it's very active. It's, it, it, it's, it's um, you, you know, a buzz of activity really now, Dhaka. So um, you were a child when Bangladesh was born. Yeah. You listened to radio, the news and everything. Eventually, you got interested and applied for a job mm -hmm. in northern um, Bangladesh. Yeah. And since then, you've been there many times. What inspired you to get this job? Well, I, I, I applied for the job because of the, 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 the author that had influenced me because I'd, I... I had had contacts with the Bangladeshi community in this country. I'd also actually been to Pakistan with a friend of mine, so I'd okay. had some experience in a different um, South Asian country. And mm. your mother, you know, what was her opinion when you went to Bangladesh? Well, my mother, I think, never really went, to, you know, never really went outside of England, as okay. far as I know. I think we only ever went on a day trip to France but when she I said was growing about up. But Bangladesh. she was, I think, quite um, alarmed, really, that I should suddenly uh, kind of uproot myself and go to a, another country, you know, quite a long way away, really. Um, but um, she did have a friend who had uh, been to uh, Bangladesh. And again, when I was looking through my letters, I noticed that this friend told her that um, Bangladesh was a jewel in the crown, I think the expression okay. used Thank was. You. So um, that, I think, uh, reassured her somewhat. OK. Um you Bangla? I am a Bangla. I am a boy. I am a boy. I am a boy. I am a boy. A boy Prokash uh, Kobe. Uh, okay. So I've written this book, mm -hmm. and uh, Boyanam 
Bino Obigotai, Bino Drisho, uh -huh. which is, I, I, I chose the title because I think I've had different experiences of Bangladesh. I've had an experience of working for an international NGO. I had the experience of going to Bangladesh and taking part in my friend's um, wedding with a family from this we'll, country. We'll continue our discussion. Uh, we have to go for a break. Okay. Uh, we'll be back soon. Viewers, stay with us. Welcome back. We were talking to our guest about him speaking Bengali. I started to learn, I mean, I learned a little bit of Bengali going to and fro from Bangladesh, but then I decided to seriously learn Bengali because I was going regularly and interacting with the project. So originally I went to SOAS, but their class didn't really continue. So I arranged private lessons and in fact I got my GCSE and then my A level. People Bengali. say Bengali is uh, not an easy language. It's quite it difficult. It's very amazing difficult. That um, you can start, uh, you can write and speak Bengali. How yeah. about Sileti? No, I can't speak Sileti. Yeah. Although my understand? book is being published by Nagari, which of course is the, named after the language of Silet. Silet. And um, when Sileti people speak, do you understand? What I understand some of uh, the Sileti, but uh, not a lot. Not and of course, lot. most people in Silet now all, uh, speak, speak standard Bengali, really. And also English, I, I think. Some, mainly some, standard Bengali. Some. Yeah. So you work with two projects, especially yes. the Silet one. At yes, Cash the I'm chair because, now of the Friends of Kashmir. Yes, Bay. because I do remember Channel S News uh, giving coverages on your activities. Yes, they have covered all. So activities. when someone mentioned about your name, I knew who you were. Tell us about this project in Select. Well, the project in Select was established in 1984 by somebody called um, Peter East uh, yeah. with somebody called Harun Ahmed. Peter had worked in East London. And they really were working with Kastabir School. Um, Kastabir School. In Silet. In Silet. City, yeah. um, and established some schools under the sky to enable children who wouldn't have really gone to the primary without school. Without any roof. Uh, without any Over roof. Okay. To go to the school. Mm -hmm. And the projects continued since 1984. So they've got very good relationships with the local community on the mm -hmm. T estates and now working with the slum dwellers in that part of um, Silet, uh, as well as the, the uh, schools under the sky for the young children. We also have a sewing workshop and a coaching class so that to support people when they get a bit older. Okay. And at the moment, one of the things we're doing is trying to create shelters for the schools, because obviously in the rainy season, the schools can't meet, and all the parents and the guardians say, the one thing that would make a big difference for the schools is um, a shelter. shelter. So a priority is to find sites for those shelters so the land. to raise mm -hmm. money to construct the shelters. I'm very pleased Muslim Charity, who you will know, because I think yes, Char yes. Uh, Channel S is a partner with Part Muslim Charity, have um, funded the first uh, school shelter, mm -hmm. um, which is on one of the T estates. Okay. Yeah. So... Um, how do you get those those children attracted into coming to your institution? Well, I, it's, it, I mean, because the school is there, there are lots of children living locally. It's open air, so people know Word about it mouth. and come. And a lot of a lot of people, the school has now existed for a long time. So, even some of the parents are now children who who attended the school previously parents, themselves. No. Yeah. Okay, and uh, are they? You know, are there any age restrictions? Well, the schools under the sky are for children three to six. So it's pre-primary, pre-primary pre -primary pre -primary. school. Yes. And um, then afterwards, where do they go? They go to local primary schools, Madrasa, um, Kastabir Primary School particularly, which obviously I think has quite a good reputation. But when they come to you, 
It's all free? Is it's it all free? free. It's all free. All free. Yes. Do you have many teachers? And the coaching class is free as well. Okay. Yes, so we have over 30 teachers. Yeah. Over 30. And, what's and they're the part-time. They're okay. part-time. So it's just a couple of hours in the morning. Okay. What's the number of these students you have? Well, it's um, probably about five or six hundred in total. Five or six yes. hundred people, yes. but, yeah. and you do not have shelter as such. No, they, 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 well, some of them have kind of, I mean, they meet under a tree, or some of them do meet under a kind of uh, basic uh, shelter, but now we're trying to construct shelters ourselves. Cause do you get any help from the government? We don't have any direct financial uh, help from the government now. Um, okay. Mm. Okay. So, and how about when they're studying, you know, uh, the food and everything? We don't provide, provide any food. food. So they just come for certain... They come for a couple of hours. Couple so of it's hours. an introduction, really, to schooling. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, it's amazing. It's amazing. I'm really impressed. Mm -hmm. Really impressed. Um, unfortunately, you know, you know, I'm I'm sad to hear that, you know, they they uh, are not given proper shelters. They study or they have their classes under the tree. Well, that was how it started, and I think now what we are hoping to do is create shelters, shelters. for the school. So, if anybody out there or any of your viewers wants to get involved in supporting that, I mean, that's very much what we would welcome, particularly with sites in that area, so, because okay. that's the big challenge for us, finding suitable sites. I mean... We, we, so, how we, often are you there? How often am I in Bangladesh? Well, I've spent... I was working, I was Chief Executive of Voluntary Action Islington okay. um, until a couple of years ago when I decided I'd stop and because now both my parents have passed away I decided this was a good opportunity to spend some more time in Bangladesh to develop my Bengali, to develop my interest in Bengali literature, uh, yes my, my, of course my interest in humanitarian work but also my interest in Bengali literature and music particularly is my Culture. passion Culture. Um, now because I, through my A-level, I really developed an interest particularly in Bengali music. So um, I've been doing that Excellent. as well while I've been in Bangladesh. So where do you live when you get there? Well, I live between Silet and Dhaka. Silet and Dhaka. Mm. Okay. How about food? Do you cook? No. But no? I, no, but the, the get, I, st I get tend to get food generally from guest houses or friends. Okay, so, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Tell us about the Bengali culture. Yeah. So obviously my um, interest developed in um, Bengali music, particularly through studying A-level. I mean, it kind of, I think it's the reason I managed to get my yeah. A-level because uh, the, the, the grammar and all of that is not really very interesting. Yeah. And I'm not a natural linguist, but I did enjoy um, Bengali music. music and subsequently I've joined Music the in what sense? Folk? Mainly folk. Or I mean okay. mainly Lalon. I can sing a couple of Lalon songs. Tagore obviously. Karim? Shah Abdul uh, Yeah Karim. I quite like I can't sing any Shah Abdul Karim songs but I do Asun quite Raza. listening to them. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. That's good. And also That's modern. I mean I like Ornob. I like um, James as well. Uh -huh. And literature? And literature, yes. I mean, I obviously, because I'm in Silet, I know Jafar Iqbal, so okay. I've, uh, I, I read a lot of his uh, stories uh, when I was learning uh, Bengali, um, and I've read some other literature as well. It's very yeah. interesting, Yeah. very interesting, and, you know, um, to hear uh, Bangladesh in a different perspective. Um, you've been there for a number of years. Mm-hmm. What do you think about the country itself and its future? Well, obviously, I mean, Bangladesh has changed massively since 1987. I mean, Dhaka used to be quite relatively quiet and none of the it's traffic a mega city jams. Now. And now it's a mega city. Yeah. And I think I even read that um, there's a projection that the urban area will extend from Dhaka to Chittagong. Which is, uh, which would make it, I think, uh, one of the biggest mega cities in the, in the world. world. Um, in but there's lots. Of, I think there's there's lots of positive things about the changes that have happened in Bangladesh. But also, 
obviously something Tell to us lots. about Silet. In Silet, well, I mean, Silet has grown as well as a city. Mm. Um, and uh, I mean, one of the things I went to there was uh, the Bengal Foundation had a wonderful oh, yes, program the um, uh, there um, earlier this year. Um, so I went to some of that. I went to the Shah Abdul Karim festival, festival as well. Okay. Um, so, yes, I mean, and Silet is is I think it used to be quite rural in its character, but now it's much it's more grown. much more urban. Grown, and. Uh, so, you know, it's very interesting and I, we can just continue our, our discussion, but unfortunately time we are running out. Right. Um, what is your message to our viewers in the community? Well, I think my message to viewers in the community is um, that it's really important, I think, for children and young people to engage with, with Bangladeshi culture and you know, get, gain an understanding of Bangladeshi culture. And there are initiatives, I think, to help that, particularly in the music and cultural mm -hmm. field. Shauda, the, 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 the um, Shauda Society, the Radha Raman Society. Mm -hmm. There are um, organizations here that are promoting Bengali culture. And I think it's very, I mean, culture, a lot- Culture, music. Culture, music. Everything, you name it, because uh, 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 they call it the third uh, Bengali capital. Yeah, and is also London. obviously to get involved with social projects like Castabir, like our work with street children. Mm -hmm. I think that's all uh, very important and it's something that I don't actually always see. I think a lot of uh, children and young people in this country whose parents came from Bangladesh, mm -hmm. they often sometimes seem to not want to have anything much to do with Bangladesh. But now they are. Um, now they are. Some. Maybe yeah. some are. Some are. Anyway, it's been very interesting uh, talking to you. Um, unfortunately, we have run out of time. So, Mike, thank you very much for coming thank this you. evening. I know you are flying uh, tomorrow. Yes. And you yes. made every effort to <laughs> make sure that you come to the Channel studio. We do appreciate it. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.